vector addition problems. I'm going to do a vector addition problem, uh, not like I normally do for my normal physics class. I'm going to do it like it would be done in a high school physics class, which is not the way I would do it. Okay, but if you have to do it this way, you have to do it this way. So I'm going to present a problem, and I'm going to solve this three different ways, three ways. So number one, I'm going to do it graphically, which you may or may not do. And then I'm going to use the law of sines and cosines, which a lot of high school classes do, unfortunately. I don't really like that way. And I'm going to do it the way I would do it. Now there's another, there's a couple other problems here, but let's just, let me present the problem and then I'll show you uh, how we're going to do it. So here I have a boat with a water speed of five meters per second. I changed this, I redid this problem at 40 degrees north of west. Okay, that's one of the problems. Uh, and the water moves at four meters per second, 30 degrees north of east. So what's the velocity of the boat with respect to the ground? So you know, imagine what's going on here. I have water flowing this way, but the boat's driving this way. So it's going to actually move kind of like not in the same direction because the water pushes it this way. This is a velocity addition problem, which is, I mean, a lot of times they just gloss over. It's a relative velocity problem. So if I have the velocity vector of the boat with respect to the water, and the velocity of the water with respect to the ground. When I add these together, if I put these indices like that, it's almost as though this water cancels and I get boat ground, right? So the velocity of the boat with respect to the ground is the velocity of the boat with respect to the water plus the velocity of the water with respect to the ground. And I don't think most of these problems in, in these math classes focus on relative velocity. They're just adding vectors, okay? So I don't think they really focus on that aspect of it, but let's do it anyway. So I have the magnitude and direction, magnitude and direction. I want to find the magnitude and direction. Let's go ahead and do this graphically. So to do this graphically, I'm going to actually use graph paper. I'm going to switch pens um, because I want to draw the vector. So in, in this case, I'm going to draw these as a five unit long vector at 40 degrees north of west and a four vec unit long vector 30 degrees east of north and then add them together. So let's just start with that water speed first. I'm going to put it down here just to make sure I have enough room like that. Let's see, wait. Is that going to be enough? I want to make sure I have enough space. I think that'll be enough space. If it's not, we'll start over, right? Because I have, I start over all the time. So this is my east direction. I want 30 degrees north of that. So I'm going to take my protractor right here. I'm going to put my little point at the point where I want to start the vector. I'm going to make sure this is lined up with the horizontal line. And then I'm going to go over here to 30 degrees, 30 right there. And I'm going to put a mark right there. So now this is the direction of my vector like that. Now I can use whatever units I want um, because I'm plotting velocity, right? So I'm going to use, let's see if this is too big. One, two, three, four. I think this will work. So I'm going to use this scale. I don't even know what this is. So I'm going to use this scale right here, going from zero to four, right there. And I'm going to draw my line. It's not perfect because, you know, this isn't the best way to do it, but I'll put a little bit right there. So there's my, this is 30 degrees, and that's four units. Now my next vector, and this is technically an arrow. My next vector is going to be from here, and I'm going to go 40 degrees uh, north of west. So I'm going to put my marker right there, and I want this to be parallel to this, but it's going to have to just estimate that. And I'm going to look at 40 degrees now, right there. Now I can draw a thing. I'm going to use the same scale here. I'm going to draw this 5. So I'm going to put this right there so now you see there's my other dot and i'm putting my start right here and i'm going to go to five so there's my final point right there okay so there's my two vectors and that's 40 degrees that's 30 degrees and that's five now to find the final resultant this is the velocity of the water the water with respect to the ground this is the velocity of the boat with respect to the water. And so this from here to there is going to be my velocity of the water boat with respect to the ground. And I can just measure the length of that. 
So let's measure the length. I'm going to use the same scale right there. And I get 5.1234, looks like. So velocity of the boat with respect to the ground is 5.4 meters per second. Now I need to find the angle. So in this case, it's a little tough, right? Because I'm going to draw the north line right there. That's north. So I want to measure the angle between those two. It's really small. That's fine. I can do it. So I'm going to put this on the vector right there. And then I'm measuring this angle. So that's one, two, three. So this uh, theta is going to be equal to, uh, let's say, about three degrees. And that's going to be west of north. Or if you wanted it to be, you could say this is 360 minus 3 equals 357 uh, degrees. So that's the angle But if you go all the way around. So that's that. The one, I don't think this is the best way to add these vectors because, you know, you're measuring things and you can make measurement errors. But you can see what's going on and I think that's very useful. <clears throat> okay, let's use the law of sines and cosines to do the same problem and see if we get something similar, it won't be exactly the same. Well, I already know what my picture looks like, so I'm going to draw my picture here. Uh, I'm going to make it a little exaggerated. So there's my north, east, uh, let's say this like that. So this is 30 degrees. That's 40 degrees. And I want to find this vector right here. I want to find that right there. Okay. <clears throat> so remember that if I have the law of sines and cosines says this, if I have a triangle with three angles, I'm going to call them alpha, beta, and gamma. And then the opposite to the alpha angle is the side A. The opposite to the beta angle is side B. The opposite to the uh, gamma angle is side C. <clears throat> then I have the following two relationships. Sometimes I'll draw this, uh, a lot of times I do, as A, uh, B, and C capital. But I don't like using capital in lowercase letters, so I use the Greek alpha, beta, gamma. And they just look cool anyway. So I have the following two relationships. The law of sine says that the sine of the angle alpha divided by the opposite side A is equal to the sine of the angle beta divided by the opposite side B, which is equal to the sine of the angle gamma divided by its opposite side C. That's the law of sines. The law of cosines says that if I want to find the length of A, A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine alpha. So if I want to find the angle opposite of it, uh, if I know the angle opposite and the two sides, I can find that length right there. And it's kind of like a modified version of Pythagorean theorem. So that's what I have right there. So let's go back over to our triangle. And if we look, I know this side is 4 and that side's 5. I knew that. And I know this angle is 30, but I need this angle. So here we're going to use that trick. If I have this is the measured from 40 degrees and this is 30 degrees. Now I have this line that's bisecting these parallel lines. So this angle and this angle have to be the same. So if that's 40 and that's 30, then this angle is 70. Okay, so you do have to do some geometry here. Okay, that does happen. But now you'll see I have this situation. If I call this the angle alpha, then I, this is the side A and I know B and C. So I can use this right here. So I can say uh, A is going to be equal to the square root of B squared, which is either one of these can be B. Let's call, if I rotate this, uh, this is, I'm going to call, I can call that B. Let's call this B. Let's call this C. So B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of this angle, I'll put it in as 70 degrees. So let's put that in our calculator and let's get the, the length of this side. And I have my little calculator holder right here just so it stands up a little bit better. Um, I'm going to do it in one fell swoop unless I make a mistake. Okay, so I'm going to say, uh, let me look up here because I do make mistakes. Okay, so square root of b squared, which is 4, 4 squared plus 
5 squared minus 2 times 4 times 5 times cosine 70 close parenthesis close parenthesis equals 5.22 so <clears throat> a is 5.22 meters per second so you see I mean it's a little off it's pretty close to this our measured way okay so that's the length that's the speed but now I need to find this angle right there okay so now we have a problem I need to find some angle <clears throat> well I think the best thing to do is to be defined this angle right here which I'm gonna call gamma right if I match that up it's the opposite side to see so I want to find this total angle right here and then but that's not lined up with the north and, and stuff so let's just say sine of gamma over C equals uh, I can use any angles that I want but I don't know that angle so let's use sine of alpha over a because I just found a right now with this I can solve for um, gamma so if I multiply both sides by C I get sine of gamma equals C times sine of alpha over a and then uh, I can take the inverse sine so gamma is equal to the inverse sine of C times the sine of alpha over a so let's put that in our calculator and see if we can get that so remember I'm going to use a is 5.2 let's do 5.23 okay so and then alpha is 70 degrees and C is 5 so I'm going to go clear and I'm going to enter this in one fell swoop so you can see fell swoop that's a fun thing to say inverse sine of C which is 5 times sine of 70 divided by 5.23 that's it and I get 63.9 this is equal to 63.9 degrees so that's this whole angle right there okay but I want this angle so now we got to do some geometry tricks again I actually can find this angle right there because I know this part is 30 so if I add 30 to 63.9 I get this whole angle so that's going to be equal to this thing is actually 63.9 plus 30 is 93.9 now if I want I can subtract off this right triangle right here and I get this angle is going to be equal to uh, 3.9 degrees so the answer would be the this is I know this is dumb if you're saying this is dumb too much geometry work you are absolutely correct okay the law of sines and cosines is not the way I would do this problem velocity of the boat with respect to the water is uh, I'll put an arrow it's 5.23 meters per second and it's going to be 3.9 degrees west of north and so we're pretty close we're pretty close here 5.4 and 3 so I'm pretty happy okay so we got about the same thing um, you could you could measure this angle right here too uh, I know that this is 180 so this leftover angle would be uh, or you could say 90 minus 3.9 you could do it a whole bunch of different ways but I don't really care because I think that's a dumb method to do the problem okay one more way to do this problem the best way the physics way the way that makes the most sense and is the most useful in the future so let me draw my two vectors again I'm gonna draw my whole triangle again because I want to show you something so I'm gonna I'm copying it and this is the wrong thing but I'm just over exaggerating so that we can see so this is V uh, of the water with respect to the ground this is V boat with respect to the water and I add those two together and I get this non right triangle it's not a right triangle okay and if you think back to right triangles are easy or maybe even better um, what would be an easier problem to do what if I had the the boats going this way and the waters going that way they're going the same direction would you have to use the law of sines and cosines no you just 
you could just add them together, right? They're going in the same direction. It's easy. Or even this. If they're going in opposite directions, I could subtract them. Th that's an easy problem. Easy vector. Now, there's another problem that's pretty easy. What if the boat's going this way and the water's going that way? Well, in that case, the resultant forms a right triangle. Easy. Because now I can use the Pythagorean theorem and I can use sine and cosine. I don't have to use the law of sines and cosines. So parallel, easy. Perpendicular, easy. Not parallel or perpendicular, not easy. So what we're going to do is to break this into parallel and perpendicular vectors. So if I have this vector right here, let's just take this one. It was 4 at 30 degrees. What if I make this its own new problem? I'm going to switch colors here. What if I say that vector is equal to this vector in the east direction plus this vector? So you can see that that is indeed true, right? So I can represent this vector as the sum of two vectors. And this is what we call component notation. So let's find that. Um, let's say, what would if that's 4 and that's 30, then this would be, if I say the sine of 30 is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. So let's, let's call that Vy. I'm going to call this Vy. Vy over 4. That's a 4. So Vy is going to be equal to 4 sine 30, right? So remember, sine is a function for right triangles. This is, all, this is only true for right triangles. That's why we can't use it up here. Okay, so now I know the length of that. Now I can do this one. I can say uh, cosine of 30 is V, we'll call this Vx, Vx over 4. And that's going to be, so Vx is going to be equal to 4 cosine 30. So these are numbers. Let's go ahead and get these numbers. Clear. Uh, 4 times sine 30. Make sure your calculator is in degrees mode. Is 2. Oh, I knew that. <laughs> and then it's 2 meters per second. And then clear 4 times cosine 30. Close equals 3.46 meters per second, meters per second. Okay, so I can represent this vector. I'm going to write this as the sum of those two vectors, and here's how we do that. The velocity of the water with respect to the ground, we'll write it as the ordered pair, x component 2, y component 3.46, and then I can put the units over there. So instead of saying magnitude and direction, I'm going to give an x component and a y component. And you may think, you're just making it harder. Why are you doing it hard? It's not harder. It's different, right? So now if I do the same thing, I can do the same thing for this vector. Now one of the things you'll notice is that if I do that for this vector, I can say I know this angle was 40 degrees, so I have, oh I, I'm supposed to do it in red. That's red, and this one's purple. So this is V, um, let's call it Vx, and that one's Vy. And this is 5. You'll notice that the Vy is going to be equal to, let's write it out. Um, Vy is going to be equal to 5 sine of 40. And let's calculate that. 5 times, oh sorry, you can't see, sine 40. 3.21, is that right? 3.21. And Vx is going to be equal to 5 cosine 40. Now, but that's wrong, right? Because it's going to, if I do this, I get clear 5 times cosine 40 equals, I get 3.83, but this is actually going to be negative 3.83. And why is it negative? Well, it's negative because if you look right here, it's in the negative x direction. So I have to include that there. Now, there's another way you could do that. Be careful of these. You want to draw these pictures for these uh, angles. So you can see, oh, I know that's in the negative x direction. Uh, some people will say always measure from the positive x axis. That works too, but whatever. So let's write V boat water is 3 point, no, it's 
negative 3.83, 3.21. Okay, so now I have my two velocity vectors. Let me show you why we do this. Let me uh, break, draw it up here. This is my Vx and this is my Vx. And so you'll notice that I can add these two vectors together because they're in opposite directions. It's easy. It's easy. And then I can do the same thing for the y. Vy, Vy. I can add these two. Easy. And then I have the x's and the y's are perpendicular, and that's easy. So I can add, once I get it in component form, I just add the x's and I add the y's. And then I have the, the components of the resultant. So let's do that. So I'm going to copy down. Um, let's just draw my picture again. It's right there. So let's say V boat water is, I'm going to write that vector. It's negative 3.8, 3, 3.21, 3 meters per second. And the velocity of the water with respect to the ground was 2, 3.46. So the velocity of the boat with respect to the ground, to find that, I'm going to add the x's together. So I just add these two together. I can actually do that without even using my calculator. Right? My paper's all crooked. So negative 3.83 plus 2 is going to be negative 1.83. That's fine. And then this one, let's do that one in the calculator just to be make sure we don't make a mistake. Add these two together. 3.21 plus... 3.46 equals uh, 6.67. That seems off. I think I made a mistake. 5 cosine 40, 5 sine 40. Let's just redo that. 5 times sine 40, 3.21. 5 times cosine 40, 3.8. Oh, is that right? Okay, well, let's just do it. Hmm, no, that can't be right. I'm going to get the wrong answer. I made a mistake somewhere. 4 and 30. 5 and 40. 5 and 40. That's fine. 2. Oh. Clear. So this is wrong up here. It was 3 times the y component is 3 times 4 times the cosine the sine of 30 i think that one's right 4 times the sine of 30 2 oh i got those backwards that's why okay that that's why these are backwards duh okay so this is wrong so the velocity of the boat with respect to the ground is going to be equal to I'm going to add these two together. Okay, makes much more sense now. So 3.46 minus 3.83 equals negative, negative 0.37. And then I have 2 plus that. That's going to be 5.21. Okay, I'm happy now. So if I draw that, I can draw that as a, as a triangle where it goes <clears throat> negative 3.21 in the x direction and then up. 5.21. And then that's my resultant. So let's find the magnitude of this right triangle. I can use a squared <clears throat> plus b squared equals c squared. So that's the magnitude, vbg, is going to be this squared plus this squared square root. So let's do that. Clear square root. I don't have to worry about the minus. 0. 0.37 squared plus 5.21 squared 
closed parenthesis equals 5.22 meters per second. Same thing. Now I want to find this angle right here. That's the same as this angle right there. Okay. So <clears throat> in that case, I can use tangent of, I'll call it theta, is going to be the opposite, 0 0.3137, is it 31 or 37, divided by 5.2. So theta is going to be the inverse tangent of 0 0.37 over 5.2. Clear. Second, tangent, inverse, 0 0.37 divided by 5.2, close. And I get 4.06 degrees. And you'll notice that I, I get a little bit different number here. And <clears throat> part of the reason is because we're not dealing with square roots the same way we did before. Um, so there's a rounding error. You're going to get slightly different error answers, and that's fine. Okay, <clears throat> let me show you one more important thing. Why is this component, it seems like it's more complicated. Why is it more important? Why is it better? Well, what if I had three vectors to add together? If I use the law of sines and cosines, I have to find this one and that angle and then find this one and add that one. I have to do law of cosines and law of sines twice. Fine if you want to do that. With vector components, I just find component, 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 add them all together, and it's the same thing. Also, what if you want to do a three-dimensional vector? Well, live law of sines and cosines gets really kind of complicated in three dimensions, but vectors do not. Vector components do not. Okay, so, but that was three ways to do these vector addition things. I'm not a fan of law of sines and cosines. If that's what you're doing in your math class, then do, your, do what your instructor says. But when you get to physics, I don't think that I have ever used law of sines and cosines in physics uh, for vector addition. I just never do it. And I've been doing physics for a long time. So if you want to do it, that's fine. I'm not going to do it. Okay, I hope that helps.